long before the first Dodge cars were built in 1914. John and Horace Dodge had a reputation for excellence in the transportation industry. John Dodge was born in 1864 in Niles, Michigan. Two years later, he had a brother, Horace. There were three more children in the family. The father of the Dodge brothers owned a foundry and machine shops. So, the brothers were very fond of engineering and mechanics. In 1886, the Dodge family moved to Detroit where John and Horace took jobs in a boiler factory. They later started working together as typists for the Dominion Typograph Company in Canada. Dominion Typography was ill-suited to make bicycles and soon went bankrupt. The Dodges saw their employer's failure as an opportunity to start their own business. The brothers had their own peculiarities. John loved to communicate with people and sail, and Horace had a talent for mechanics. He had golden hands. In 1897, Horace invented and patented ball bearings. They were stain-resistant, so they didn't clog or stop working. In the late 1800s, they built bicycles before throwing their hands at automotive parts for Oldsmobile and Ford. The Dodge brothers teamed up with Frederick Evans to start producing Evans and Dodge bicycles. Frederick was an investor for them, and the bikes were built with unique ball bearings. It seemed like a great business idea, but it failed because the brothers didn't like building bikes. Four years after the creation of the company in 1901, they sold their share for $3,700. After the sale, they returned to Detroit and used the money to set up their own machine shops but quickly switched their interest to automotive parts as the new industry grew rapidly. Even as parts manufacturers, they had a reputation for being the best. They signed huge contracts with the Oldsmobile Motor Vehicle Company and Ford Motor Company to build engines, transmissions, and axle frames. So impressed with their design and craftsmanship. In late 1902, Henry Ford offered the Dodge brothers a stake in his company if they would supply major components for his cars. The Dodge brothers soon became major stockholders of the Ford Motor Company. Henry Ford gave them stock when he couldn't pay in cash and they became a 10% owner of the company. He then contracted them to build the Model T because Ford couldn't keep up with the demand. And they even redesigned some parts of the car. In their workshop, they created a car that was to become the basis of Ford's successful business. After that, John Dodge became vice president of Ford. But the brothers were not happy with the collaboration with Henry Ford. Because of this, they often began to sit in bars, drunk until they lost their memory. They were drunkards, prone to belligerence when intoxicated. And they had a reputation for violent behavior in the city. In 1911, John and his friend beat up a lawyer in a bar. The information quickly got into the media and ruined the reputation of one of the Dodges. After more than a decade of supplying Ford parts, the Dodge brothers terminated their contract. Partly out of frustration with Ford's refusal to improve his product, John and Horace set their sights on building their own car. They used some of the profits from Ford stock to start the Dodge Brothers Automobile Company. In 1913, they expanded their factory and built the first test track. No other automaker had such a testing leg. On July 17, 1914, the Dodge Brothers Company was chartered in Michigan. John and Horace were confident they could build their own cars. They said someday, all those Model T owners are going to want to buy an automobile. On November 14, 1914, those buyers had their chance. The first Dodge car dubbed, Old Bensie, rolled off the line. The new car sold well and quickly established the Dodge Brothers' reputation for dependability and value. To make sure they were delivering the best product possible, the Dodge Brothers often carried out vehicle testing on their own, dropping tires off roofs, and even personally crash testing their cars. So exacting were their standards that their slogan dependable coined the word dependability and became synonymous with the Dodge car. These reliable cars were even popular on the international front. The Dodge car was designed to compete with Ford's Model T with the whopping 35 horsepower. It was a budget-friendly car that made the brothers a huge success. The car produced at the Hamtrak plant on November 10, 1914 represented a significant improvement over Ford's cars. The Dodge Brothers' car had an automatic starter that rarely depended on cranking, making it easier for women to drive. It also had a manually operated fuel pump that allowed the Dodge car to climb a steep hill without forcing the driver to shift into reverse, and reverse up the hill as some Ford Model T drivers had to do. Dodge dealers quickly began popping up all over the country. The first was Cumberland Motors in Nashville, Tennessee, which operated until the late 1960s. The Dodge brothers actually received 22,000 applications from new Dodge dealers before they even finished Model 30 production, thanks in large part to their reputation in the auto parts industry and the work they've done with Ford. Dodge launched the Roadster in 1915 and the following year introduced hardtop winter cars with side windows as a center door sedan. 
Dodge launched an advertising campaign with the slogan, it speaks for itself, and the company invented the word reliability, which was soon added to the dictionary. For three years, the Dodge Brothers Company had been so successful, and had a good reputation that it even cooperated with the government. In 1916, Dodge sold 150 vehicles to the U.S. Army and developed a truck that would be used as a military ambulance. During the following year, Dodge cars and trucks were also used extensively by U.S. forces during World War I. By the end of the war, the Dodge Brothers plant was the fourth largest American automobile manufacturer in production. In the summer of 1919, their factory was producing 500 cars every day and still lagged behind the volume of orders received from dealers. At that time, more than 100,000 Dodge cars had already been sold. Within five years of building their first car, the Dodge Brothers expanded their lineup and built a yearly total of 121,000 vehicles. With sales of $24 million, tragedy came on the heels of success. In 1920, John and Horace Dodge left for an automobile exhibition. They had bright prospects. A week after this, Horace got very ill. The doctor diagnosed him with the flu, which had killed more than 500,000 Americans from 1918 to 1919. But there were rumors that he was the victim of a bad batch of illegal liquor. John Dodge was with his brother at this time. They were inseparable right from childhood. Because of this, he also fell sick. Since John had tuberculosis for more than 20 years, his body could not beat the flu, and he died 10 days later at the age of 55. Horace Dodge continued to fight his illness and soon recovered. He was a broken man without his older brother and partner. Horace started drinking alcohol every day and died in December, 1920 from cirrhosis of the liver. He was 52 years old at the time of his death. Just months apart, both John and Horace Dodge died, but their company philosophy remained. Dodge vehicles continued to be known for their durability and dependability. In 1922, Dodge became the first U.S. automaker to introduce a closed car with an all-steel body. Dodge also became the first U.S. car maker to open an assembly plant in Europe. This new facility in northwest London started by importing light truck components and assembling them for British markets. The Dodge was the second best-selling car in the country, with production exceeding 81,000 units for that year. Their widows, Anna and Matilda began to manage the company, but women did not understand anything in business at that time, and even more so, in cars. Soon, in 1925, the widows of Horace and John Dodge sold their car business to Dylan Reed's investment bankers for $146 million, who sold Dodge to Chrysler three years later. The Dodge Corporation had huge production facilities. This allowed Chrysler to enter the top three auto giants in Detroit, along with Ford and General Motors. With that purchase, Chrysler increased its size at least five times, suddenly making Chrysler the world's third largest automaker. Chrysler gained manufacturing capability. Dodge products benefited from Chrysler's renowned engineering department. There were times when Chrysler even overtook Ford in terms of production. At first, Dodge was in second place in the corporation, and was second only to Chrysler in prestige. During the years of the Great Depression throughout the 1930s, many automakers had to look for new and innovative ways to advance production. Chrysler designers and engineers worked to uphold the Dodge Brothers' tradition of dependability while introducing draft-free ventilation, synchronized front and rear springs and hydraulic brakes. Dodge products in Britain were now sold as Chrysler's, and truck production was moved to Chrysler's London Riverbank home, where the popular semi-forward control vehicle was built. The driver sat above the engine rather than behind it, so the vehicle was more compact, better suited for European roads. In 1933, Dodge adopted its famous ram symbol, using it as a hood ornament on new Dodges. Walter Chrysler picked it after the sculpture quipped. The ram is the king of the trail, and if you encounter one, you dodge. Dodge had radically updated its cars. They started building stainless bodies, automatic spark control, a new silent transmission, and more. These changes allowed the company to preserve in difficult times. In 1935, Dodge celebrated its 3 millionth car and its 25th anniversary in 1939. At the time, the company was building over 300,000 vehicles a year. When World War II reached the US in 1941, Dodge, along with every other domestic automaker, ceased production of passenger cars to develop vehicles that could be used in the war effort. Dodge production switched to WC, light trucks, radar sets, spare gyro compasses, and B-29 engines. Among the many truck designs used during the war, the 4x4, which became known as the Power Wagon, was among the most durable. It was another example of Dodge's ruggedness and power. In 1945 Dodge released its first cars of the post-war era, the Dodge Custom 4-door sedan and the Dodge D24 Custom Coupe Cabriolet. 
The company also produced its 5 millionth car in 1946. In Europe, only Dodge trucks were built. British-built ones were exported worldwide. By the end of that decade, the brand had phased out all pre-war style Dodges and released new models such as the 1948 Power Wagon and the single-seat Wafer Roadster in 1949. Throughout the 1950s, Dodge redesigned the look of its line models to match the more flamboyant looks and styling desired by the era's consumers. Major events that Dodge experienced during this decade included the introduction of the Diplomat in 1950, the first all-metal station wagon. The Exner touch included chrome, fins, and flair, but it wasn't just what was on the outside that was turning heads. Beneath Dodge's hood, the V8 engine! Yes, and the V8 engine! This new high-performance engine known as the Red Ram was Dodge's version of the Chrysler Hemi design. It quickly made a name for itself. Shortly after it was introduced, it won two races. And in 1954, for the first time ever, a Dodge known for its dependability passed the Indianapolis 500. By the late 50s, Dodge was sporting bolder fins and lowered bodies, designs that won both admirations and attracted criticism worldwide. Just a few years later, the design excesses were seen as just that, excess. Dodge quickly brought to market a tamed-down compact car. The Lancer was built with unibody construction and powered by the famous Slant 6 engine. A bigger mode the Dodge Dart was available with a larger engine upholding Dodge's new performance and reputation, and the race was on. Hemi VH stopped into lighter weight cars like the Dart. In 1955, the Dodge Left M was released with the first ever highway hi-fi and car entertainment system. In 1964, on its 50th anniversary, the company released the Dodge Charger. Also in those days, Dodge cars began to be actively used in racing. In 1974, during one of the races, Richard Petty won a victory by driving a Dodge Charger. This is the same muscle car that Vin Diesel drove in the Fast and Furious. Therefore, the company began to produce not only family cars but also sports cars. In the early 70s of the last century, the fuel crisis that everyone remembers began. With its advent, the era of muscle cars ended. And with it, the prosperity of the American automotive industry. Chrysler was in a particularly difficult position. It was unable to offer the consumer a compact subcompact car. The corporation was forced to sell the Japanese model, Mitsubishi Lancer branded Dodge. Subsequently, this led to a dependence on the so-called captive import cars sold under the Dodge brand including the Dodge Ram 50 pickup truck, Mitsubishi Pajero, Mitsubishi Starion, and Mitsubishi Gallant. All these cars were made by Mitsubishi, but sold under the Dodge name. In the early 1980s, the Chrysler Corporation was on the verge of bankruptcy. But the situation was savaged by a large state loan. The U.S. government was worried about the fate of Dodge as it was the largest car manufacturer in the U.S. The U.S. government provided a loan guaranteed to help the Chrysler Corporation develop new products. With this government lifeline, Dodge returned to its roots, dependable, value for the dollar transportation. The K cars not sexy, but solid reliable cars helped turn the Chrysler Corporation around, along with a completely new vehicle, the front-wheel drive minivan. The Dodge Caravan, along with its sister model the Plymouth Voyager, changed the look of America's driveways forever, riding on the coattails of the K car and minivan success. The Dodge brand was on the road to recovering 80s models built on the K car platform. Like the Dodge Daytona Dynasty, Shadow, Shelby Lancer and Model Spirit RT had the right Dodge attitude, but Dodge fans wanted the return of real power. Chrysler Corporation management agreed. It was time to take chances and produce capable high-performance vehicles that even John and Horace will be proud of. In 1992, Dodge released a new brazen car in the Viper series with a 450-horsepower engine, which was later improved to a 510-horsepower. Dodge power and excitement was back with the production Viper. Limited numbers of these Vipers were exported to markets outside North America and badged as Chrysler Vipers. Just one year later, Dodge wowed them again with its new LH platform cars. The cab forward design was roomy, comfortable, and well-engineered. A modern take on Dodge's traditional quality, practicality, and value. Dodge also revamped its truck lineup featuring big rig styling in its Dakotas and Rams. These re-engineered trucks helped put Dodge back into serious sales contention. Dodge proved itself a truck leader when it introduced the Quad Cat, the industry's first rear-hinged doors with inside hands. With all these exciting new products, Dodge decided it was time to return to NASCAR racing and bring back the famed Hemi engine. The new engine was powerful and surpassed all expectations packaged in bold Dodge designs.
It gave the brand a whole new energy and drive that would delight John and Horace Dodge even today. Building on the brand's early days of quality and durability, Dodge continues to uphold its heritage of dependable, well-engineered, bold, powerful vehicles. The new millennium has brought a whole new list of innovations and upgrades for Dodges, especially starting with 2010, that same year. Dodge released a special version of the Mopar 10 Challenger, all new or heavily redesigned. By the time the company turned 100 in 2014, Dodge had achieved the notable status of America's fastest-growing automaker. Although it has been over a hundred years since John and Horace Dodge first embarked on their mission to create cars in their own image, their legacy continues to grow and flourish every year. Their new cars are constantly changing, but one thing in this company remains unchanged. It's reliability. Thanks for watching everyone. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe. Hit that bell button thing here to get notified whenever we've got a new video for you. More importantly, however, I want you to drop a comment down below about which company you want to see featured next on the channel. Be featured next on the channel. Be featured next.